So everything in our last flowchart was devoted to understanding the idea behind animal behavior. Why it's useful, how it works, and what are the ultimate causes of such behavior. Now we're going to move forward and actually start looking at real life behaviors that animals exhibit. And we're going to classify our first set of behaviors based off of what we can term sensory input. And we'll entitle this next flowchart sensory input uh, one. We'll do two flowcharts for sensory input. So when we think of sensory input, all we're saying is the following. Something is going to be input into the senses. In other words, there's going to be something that we call a stimulus. That's the key word here. A stimulus triggers, um, and what we're we studying today, we're studying behavior. And we'll say that the stimulus triggers simple or complex behaviors. And we'll see how varied these behaviors can be in terms of their simplicity or complexity. Stimulus triggers simple or complex behaviors. That's all there is to it in terms of sensory input. When some sort of input is put onto the senses, when some sort of stimulus is put onto an animal, it will trigger a simple or complex set of behaviors. For example, we can understand this idea of sensory input through something called a fixed action pattern. Fixed action pattern. So this is a great term to describe a very easy to understand sensory input behavior. A fixed action pattern was first discovered by a man uh, by the name of Nico Tinbergen. He is one of the most famous animal behaviorists, animal ecologists of all time, and he understood the fact that a stimulus is what triggers behavior. He knew that, and he established that through many different experiments with animals and that proved his idea that a stimulus triggers behavior. He would state that in a fixed action pattern specifically you get the following sensory input behavior. This is going to be a fixed action pattern, a sequence of what he called unlearned. This is a very interesting thing to think of. Sequence of unlearned behavior and the key idea here is not only that it's unlearned, but it's in response. In response. So let me rewrite response right there. Unlearned behavior in response. That's the key here. In response to what he would consider simple stimulus. And we'll see this in an example in just a second. But another key idea here is that not only is this behavior unlearned and a response that's unlearned, but once this behavior has started, so we'll say once the behavior has started, it must be completed. So once started, must be completed. And look at the name of the, the sensory input behavior. It's a fixed, meaning that it's unlearned, action pattern. The pattern is is that once it started it must be completed. The action, remember how we said behavior is action? The action is the behavior itself. A great name to understand a very simple concept. And the best way to understand I think a fixed action pattern is to look at the experiment and example that Mr. Tinbergen himself utilized. And that example comes from uh, the stickleback fish. So our example Throughout, throughout animal behavior, we're going to be looking at tons of examples. The one here that you want to really understand is the stickleback fish. So, the stickleback fish represents itself in the following way. The males, okay, the males of the stickleback fish are going to have red bellies. They are with red bellies. Okay, we don't know why or how yet. And what we also need to understand in terms of background is that not only are the males with red bellies, but what Nico Tinbergen observed is that these males always attack other, what he would consider invading males. So let's say a stickleback male has established a certain territory and another male comes by. The stickleback fish, he noticed, completed a fixed action pattern in which it always attacked another male no matter what, always. Whenever another male came into the territory, it attacked it. 
And now you might be thinking, how does it know how to, when to attack? How does it know why it's attacking it? All of these questions are what Nico Tinbergen asked, and he solved them by establishing that this action, this attack of other invading males, is a fixed action pattern, and it's a behavior that he can observe and experiment with. And he did. And in his experiment, he saw the following. So the experiment that he did um, determined the following. Experiment determined that the red color itself, the reason why I mentioned this is because it comes up right here. Experiment determined that red color is equal to, it is what triggers, it is a, a true trigger, the attack behavior. Triggers attack behavior. And so, let's go back to our idea for one second of a sensory input behavior. Stimulus triggers simple or complex behaviors. The behavior in question is attack behavior. Somebody comes into your territory, you're a stickleback fish, you attack them. How do you know to attack them? Because there's a stimulus that presents itself. What is that stimulus? That stimulus is the red color of the red bellies that the males have. And this is going to trigger the attacking behavior. This is what he called a sign stimulus. The red bellies are what he would consider a sign stimulus. It is a clear sign that says to complete a certain behavior. And once that behavior has started, don't forget, it must be completed. And that's what happens. Once it sees another red-bellied male, it will attack it. And unless uh, that male goes away, that attack will continue. Um, until somebody wins. And this is again unlearned. It's innate. It is born with this behavior which is a very very interesting thing to think about. And we'll get into that more detail later. Finally we can consider the red belly itself. So say the red belly is equal to our proximate cause. And think of it, when you think of the, the term and word proximate, you think near, right? Close to. Proximate means close. And so this is exactly what happens. When a red-bellied animal, a red-bellied sticklefish comes close within and near the uh, territory that a stickleback fish has already established, it will attack it. That is our proximate cause. The red belly is our sign stimulus, it's our proximate cause, and we also notice that the females are without red bellies. So without red belly. And so you can ask yourself, why does the stickleback fish have a red belly? And it kind of, already you might understand, it's simply because females notice males through their red bellies. And if females notice males through their red bellies, there's an opportunity to mate. And if there's an opportunity to mate, there's an opportunity to survive and reproduce, and thus evolution will act on this fixed action pattern. So a very nice, clear, understandable example of a stimulus that triggers a simple or complex behavior of attack. And that's all through seeing a red belly. That's the stickleback fish. One more that we'll do in this video and then we'll continue the idea of sensory input is migration. Migration is a very complex behavior. Fixed action pattern usually are rather simple behaviors. Attacking is a simple behavior as a result of the red belly. But migration is something, and let me spell this correctly, migration is something that is very, very, very complex. Just think about this for a second. Migration is when an animal will undergo and go through a rather regular, long distance. We're talking maybe thousands of miles. Regular, long distance change in location. That is unbelievable. How can an animal possibly know how to do this? How does it know the correct way? We can ask ourselves this. How do they, in terms of the animals that migrate, quote-unquote, know? How do they know the right way? What allows them to do this? And what allows them to do this are stimuli, stimulus, sensory input is what allows migration to work in migratory animals. For example, we know that in some migratory animals, the ones that migrate usually during the day, they use a stimulus called the sun, something you probably are very familiar with. And what they do is they actually track their position. So we'll say track position, these day traveling animals, track position with Sun, and this is through a circadian clock. We'll get to those in just a second. Track position with sun via a circadian clock 
adjustment. Remember how we said behavior might be modified or changed? This is the modification that we'll see. We'll talk about circadian clocks a little bit later. For right now, just understand that the sun represents a stimulus, and that stimulus helps this animal track the position. That's the behavior of tracking that leads to migration. So that's a very nice thing, but what about those animals that live only at night, that uh, act at night? What about the nocturnal migratory animals? These are nocturnal, the ones that are nocturnal they cannot obviously use the sun. And if they're nocturnal, you know what these animals use? They actually use a stimulus called the North Star. Nocturnal animals use the North Star. The North Star is a star that points north, and it's something that nocturnal animals use to migrate over long distances. That's how they know the right way, for, in, in essence. And finally, the last thing we always want to finish on and in terms of any behavior, well, why migrate in the first place? Seems like you're putting yourself in danger. It seems like you're going really far for, you know, is there a, a big reason why? And there is. Simply speaking, migration happens because, you know, sometimes you need to uh, follow a temperature change. Maybe it's getting too cold up north and thus you have to migrate south, aka birds. That's a big evolutionary driving mechanism of natural selection. Those that can fly south are going to succeed the most. Those that cannot fly and migrate south, those that do not know the right way to go south, cannot fly, cannot succeed, cannot survive and reproduce. Natural selection in a nutshell. And also, let's say, um, other you know very obvious things like maybe there's more food, maybe there's more resources, more mates, wherever you're migrating. Migrating is not simply because the animals are going on a vacation like humans. They're actually going somewhere for a very, very important reason. And some of those reasons may include the following that we mentioned, other reasons as well. Um, you get the picture. So that covers sensory input one. We'll look at some more sensory input a little bit later. Um, just understand we're always looking for the stimulus and what does that stimulus do? How does it relate to the behavior that we see? We see it in a fixed action pattern and we see it in migration so far.